During the World Wars, secure communication obtained through cryptic messages was vital for early success. The ability to interfere with this medium of communication was critical to understanding upcoming attacks, specifically the details outlined in Zimmerman Telegram in World War I and the Battle of Midway in World War II. Therefore, once a message was intercepted and decoded, the advantage shifted, acting as a turning point. While intentional notes were heavily relied on for planification and unification, the absence of communication was also a purposeful tactic used during the war. Men by the name of Nigel D. Gray and Joseph Rochefort, through their decipherment of encoded messages, changed the course of history. In 1866, the first permanent transatlantic telegraph cable was laid down effectively changing the speed of communication over large distances for the first time. Utilizing two newly invented concepts in the field of electricity, batteries by Alessandro Volta and electromagnetism by Hans Christian Orsted, scientists in Britain and the U.S., notably Samuel Morse, Leonard Gale, and Alfred Vail were able to invent the electric telegraph in 1837, which would see its peak usage during this time. Prior to the state, handwritten letters and notes would be sent through boats and horse, taking weeks or up to months at a time to reach their destination. George Bernard Shaw, an Irish playwright and novelist, expressed it best when he said, Those who admire modern civilization usually identify it with the steam engine and electric telegraph. End quote. A significant message that was intercepted at the exact right time was the Zimmerman Telegram, a telegram from Germany to Mexico. This seemingly harmless memo that the United States actually aided the Germans in sending was actually a message that outlined a threat to their own territory. During the beginning of World War I, the British had disconnected Germany's transatlantic telegraph cable. This technological barrier halted the communication plans of Arthur Zimmerman, as there was no other way to privately and quickly get this message to German Minister of Mexico, Hervon von Urcht. However, since the United States looked to maintain their neutrality policy, they agreed to aid Germany in sending encrypted messages. Therefore, unknowingly, the U.S. almost prompted an attack on itself. The decoded version of the Zimmerman telegram reads as follows. We make Mexico a proposal of alliance on the following basis. Make war together. Make peace together. Despite the great significance of the intentional secrecy and the message being communicated in the telegram, it was Britain's actions of withholding information and therefore lack of communication with the U.S. that positioned them in a powerful standing. Because Germany had to transmit their note through a different medium, they actually passed through London, where cryptologists were able to seize and decipher it. Room 40 was an organization in Britain that specialized in breaking German codes. By using German code books found in combat and through military intelligence, a man by the name of Nigel de Grey decoded the telegram. You want to bring America into war, he asked? But Room 40's chief captain, William Blinker Hall, knew that it was not a simple yes or no answer. Hall decided that the information was to not leave Room 40's office for weeks. What Captain Hall really needed was time to find a way to deliver the news to President Wilson without showing the fact that they had been intercepting messages sent over American cable wires. The lack of immediate articulation of the Zimmerman telegram helped hide from the Germans the fact that they had broken their codes and prevented the U.S. from getting upset at Britain. This practice of intentional failure to communicate will be paralleled in World War II when Britain's MI6 organization kept quiet about having cracked the codes from the German Enigma machine. Afraid of losing their advantage if the Germans realized they had cracked the code, the British decided to keep everyone in the dark, making the difficult decision to not even let their own navy and military units know. Alan Turing, a Cambridge mathematician, was used by the British to lie and essentially spy on the Americans. Turing would become one of the most influential people in World War II, having created a machine called the bomb that could break any Enigma coded message. What MI6 told the government officials and British naval officers is that all of their information was coming from an MI6 spy codenamed Boniface, who was believed to control a network of agents through Germany. However, Boniface was all fictional and a means to hold back information. Turing's role in the U.S. was to make their intelligence surface believe that Britain was struggling to match the U.S. in their expertise, giving him the opportunity to take note of the machines they were developing, in particular a speech encryption machine being developed for Winston Churchill and Franklin Roosevelt. However, unknown to the U.S. is that Britain had been working on breaking code to and from German U-boats since 1940. Britain's lack of communication once again proved to be their leg up in a world war. This time, they were able to utilize their withholding of information to plan ahead of the Germans while simultaneously gaining more knowledge from the U.S. Hoping Germany's resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare was enough to motivate the U.S. to join the war, but realizing it was not, the British handed a copy of the Zimmerman telegram to the British Foreign Office. 
With the claim of interception happening in Mexico, they were able to give the note to the U.S. Ambassador Walter Page. When the U.S. finally received notice of this, they still did not know the full extent of British involvement. On March 1, 1917, the Zimmerman telegram was on American newspapers all around the country. The public was outraged and the desired effect had taken place. The disclosing of communication let British control exactly how and when to deliver the news to the United States, achieving their goal of manipulating public opinion and Woodrow Wilson into entering the war. From the German perspective, Zimmerman said, I instructed the Minister of Mexico in the event of war with the United States to propose a German alliance to Mexico and simultaneously to suggest that Japan join the alliance. I declared expressly that despite the submarine war, we hoped that America would maintain neutrality. My instructions were to be carried out only after the United States declared war and a state of war supervened. I believe the instructions were absolutely loyal as regards the United States." End quote. Robert Lasing, Secretary of State in 1917, says the Zimmerman telegram, quote, in one day accomplished a change in sentiment and public opinion which would otherwise have required months to accomplish. From the time that the telegram was published, the United States' entry into the war was assured, end quote. The United States' entry into the war in alliance with the Allies helped finally defeat the Central Powers. And while the war only lasted until 1918, encrypted messages would continue to play a role in World War II. When George Washington gave his farewell address, he set the precedent for isolationism and avoiding entangling treaties by saying, quote, It is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world. Why quit our own to stand upon foreign ground? Why, by interweaving our destiny with that of any part of Europe, entangle our peace and prosperity in the toils of European ambition, rivalship, interest, humor, or caprice? This isolationist mentality continued for many years, and after the horrors of World War I, the isolationist mentality was even stronger. But with tension rising as the war raged on in Europe, all that was needed was a catalyst to sway the public opinion. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese Empire executed a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor that resulted in the death of 2,400 people and destroyed 300 airplanes and 20 ships, including the USS Arizona battleship. Many people were suspicious as to why the U.S. was so unprepared, and rumors spread that perhaps military leaders and even President Roosevelt knew about the attack but did not take action, as it was a perfect catalyst to join the war. It was never confirmed that FDR knew about the attack, but there were several investigations, and Congress even passed a resolution to form a joint committee on the investigation of the Pearl Harbor attack. Naval officers on the base quickly sent dispatches to inform other naval fleets, and it wasn't long until radio stations were informing the American public of the tragedy. Most people knew what this meant for the U.S., and regardless of Roosevelt withholding the information, by the next day, war had been declared on Japan. Still fueled from the rage of the tragedy of Pearl Harbor, the Americans fought fiercely. With codebreakers working as fast as they could, the United States was making significant gains on being able to break the Japanese codes and gain critical information on the whereabouts of Japanese fleets. Breaking the Japanese ciphers was simpler than the German ciphers because they were using more traditional codes, such as book ciphers and simple code machines called JR-95B. Because of how advanced American cryptologists were, a significant amount of Japan's messages were able to be decoded. Location of islands or really important names were only ever referred to by a two-letter abbreviation. The U.S. decoded a message gaining knowledge of a big attack on the island abbreviated as AF. They had suspicions of it being the island of Midway, but had no way to verify. Because the Japanese fleet outnumbered the available American fleet two to one, if the Americans had a shot of winning the battle, they would need to take the risky move of sending their entire fleet to the exact location. To verify their suspicions of AF being Midway, the coders decided to create a ruse where they sent a message from Midway saying that their desalinization machine was broken. Not long after, the United States intercepted messages from Japan saying that, that AF was in need of fresh water, and therefore they verified the connection between AF and Midway. Because of the efficiency of the cryptologists working to intercept and decipher codes on the Pacific, the Battle of Midway was won by the United States, only losing one carrier and 307 people, compared to Japan's loss of four carriers and 2,500 casualties. This battle was a turning point in the war because without having Midway, Japan could not dominate the Pacific like they had hoped, and the U.S. re-established its naval dominance in the region. Had it not been for the use of communication through encrypted messages sent by the German and Japanese, and the cryptologists from the allied countries who broke these codes, World War I and World War II could have potentially had very different outcomes.